I'm super excited to introduce Paul Hinsey, who's going to be talking about Terraform. He's our director of Terraform right here at HashiCorp. Hello. Hello, HashiCorp. Hello, over 1,000 people in this room. This is pretty incredible. Hello, live stream people. Hello, future video watchers. I am speaking to you from the past. Uh, my name is Paul Hinsey. I am so ridiculously honored to be here to represent to you all of the hard work that has gone into Terraform over the last year and to talk with you a little bit about what the next year of Terraform is going to look like. So much to share with you. Uh, I want to start with a couple of just progress updates. So here are some numbers. Uh, some of these numbers are absurd. So 1,200, more than 1,200 contributors to Terraform. That's more than fit in this room. So if we had brought all of the Terraform contributors here, they would not fit. We would be a fire code violation. Uh, I'm actually curious, are there any Terraform contributors in the room? Anybody have a PR accepted to a provider, a docs update? Awesome. Look at all them. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, yeah. The other number here that is really exciting is that providers number. So providers are the plugins to Terraform that allow it to uh, address different APIs to manage more resources. 160 plus, that number has skyrocketed in the last year. Uh, Mitchell's actually going to talk a little bit later about how we pulled that off. But this, these numbers just show you the adoption of Terraform has been just incredible to continue to watch. The other two numbers I'd like to share with you have to do with our announcements from last year. So last year, we introduced the Terraform registry to share modules. And we introduced Sentinel, our policy as code framework, which is integrated with all of our product projects. But my favorite integration is the Terraform integration. Um, and I'm really pleased to, to, to report that both of these uh, new pieces of the Terraform story have become key pieces of the Terraform story. That 900 plus modules number is just public modules. And the, um, so that, that means there's a vast majority more of people using Terraform en Enterprise to share modules amongst their organizations. Um, and 35,000 policies checked with Sentinel already, and that number just keeps going up. So it's been really exciting to see the adoption of these two new features. Great, so let's get down to business. I have two conclusions for you today that drive four announcements. And if I do my job, I think you'll see how they all fit together into the way that we're approaching Terraform generally. So looking at generally at all of the things I have to show you, it really comes down to a theme of listening and reacting to the Terraform community. We spend all of our time talking to users, talking to customers, and I think you're going to see that the announcements that we have for you today are driven from community feedback, every single one of them. A lot of them from conversations that have happened at HashiConf's past. So I hope you feel that you're participating with us in the development of our projects and our products, uh, because that's really how it feels to us. And uh, if you, so one of my favorite things about working at HashiCorp is how principles oriented we are. Uh, and so the, I mapped both of, I, I mapped my theme to two of our company principles. You can read about our principles on our website, or you can just hang out near me, and I will blab on about the Tao of HashiCorp. Um, but yes, uh, I think if you're interested in learning how we approach problems and solutions, uh, that's great material for you to read. Okay. Getting into it now. Conclusion number one is that Terraform needed deep language improvements. Now, we're proud of HCL, and we think that it is key, has been key to Terraform's success, and we've been imp improving it incrementally over the years. But the user feedback about points of friction started to stack up against limitations of the language and the list of things that we wanted to improve that were being hindered by the core engine of the language got so long that we needed to, to draw this deeper conclusion so that we could take, a, take bold action. And so you'll notice that this is in past tense because this is the conclusion that has been driving our work for the better part of this year. This, of course, is Terraform 012. 
Terraform 012 is so huge. There are so many features. I could spend the rest of the day just talking to you about Terraform 012 features. If you're le looking to learn about 012, you are in the right place. I will get, I'm, I'm, I wasn't going to put anything in, and then people are like, oh, you can put in a couple. So I'm very excited. I get, to, I get to show you just a couple of the features. So the whole thing about Terraform 012 is a richer type system and a richer language engine underlying the whole of Terraform. So here's one of my favorite features. The new four keyword allows you to iterate over lists and generate lists and maps. So this gives you a whole bunch of new flexibility. It's a new primitive that I think is going to feel like a lot more elbow room in manipulating data as you pass it between modules. So you can see here, I have a, uh, I'm just generating a map of instance ID to private IP, um, iterating over the set of AWS instances in my vicinity. This is really going to help uh, the, the flexibility of the language. Speaking of flexibility, this one's great. You can actually pass a whole uh, resource as a module input or an output. This is massive because it takes away a lot of the boilerplate of uh, having to explicitly choose attributes that you have to pass in and out of each, uh, of each module. So I can pass the whole VPC in here, and, and the module can just use what it needs. So here's the other side of that. Here, now we're inside of that module. Here's a type declaration using this new rich type system. And I, you can see I've named an object here. And I, I said, I just need an ID that is a string. So the VPC resource matches this type signature. But I could also have this passed in as a literal. And my favorite thing is if you mess it up, uh, so here is an example. I went back out of the app module. And you can see I've, I've passing in a literal here that doesn't have an ID. Uh, you get the best part, which is these rich error messages. The context that the language engine gives us. <laughs> yeah. The core engineers, the core engineers, I was just flipping out about these error messages. And the core engineers who have been in the engine of, uh, of 012 were like, really, it's error messages that you're most excited about? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. Uh, the, uh, so yes, the language en engine gives us so much more context at the site of the error that enables us to present all of this information to you. So you've, get, you've got context here. You've got cross-references to other module definitions. Um, a lot of times, you'll actually get a suggestion about a misspelling of an attribute. Um, so yeah, the error messages in 012, I think, are just a total game changer for day-to-day -day writing of Terraform configuration. And uh, that's, those are only just a couple of the features in Terraform 0.12. Um, I don't have any time to, to continue, even though I really want to. Uh, so here's how you can learn more, three ways you can learn more. We've been posting a blog post series where we spend a little bit more time with one or two features in each post. That gives a really great way to sort of scroll through and read about the new features. Tomorrow on this stage, Kristen, Kristen Lambert, uh, our core engineer, is giving a live tour of 0.12. So check out that if you're interested in learning more. And oh, I'm so ridiculously excited to announce, we have a build for you. Terraform 012 is here. The alpha build. The alpha build is released. It is out there. It is an alpha, so there are things we're still finishing. So you have to read the release notes before you give it a try. But the language ergonomics is there. The language engine is there. So it's, and HashiConf's a great time to download this, try it out, let us know what you think. It's been a long road. It's been a long road for us, <laughs> believe me. Uh, but it's gotten us so many improvements, and it's gotten us a foundation for the future. As we begin the march to Terraform 1.0, this is the undergirding of the, the, the overall Terraform engine that is going to get us there. So really excited about that. Now my second conclusion. My second conclusion is a really big one, because this one drives all of our work and is towards for the next year. And this one is that collaboration is a universal problem. OK, what do I mean by that? So we've always known that as organizational complexity grows, so does the need for collaboration in Terraform. This is the work and the attention that we've been paying in Terraform Enterprise. We've been building out Terraform Enterprise as this world-class collaboration platform to solve the problem of Terraform collaboration. But what we've come to understand in conversation with our community is that collaboration starts as a problem from the first time that you want to use Terraform with somebody else. 
our original instinct was the idea that uh, generalized, uh, because we're infrastructure as code, generalized CI and VCS systems would be enough for collaboration. But what we've come to understand is that there's really a tooling gap in terms of managing some of the specifics of Terraform workflows as you try to collaborate in smaller teams. And if you're looking for evidence of this conclusion of this tooling gap, I think the community trying to solve this problem is great evidence. There are several projects out there to, that try to help close this gap by providing a solution for Terraform teams to collaborate. And so we looked at the, the field, we listened to our customers, and we realized we're sitting here on a world-class collaboration platform and, and watching the community having to solve this problem for itself. And so here's the active version of this conclusion, is that we want to be able to solve Terraform collaboration for everyone. So this is going to drive my next three announcements, and it's going to drive the, our focus of our attention for the next year. Here's the framework that we're going to be working in. Terraform Enterprise is going to remain the world-class collaboration platform that it is, but we're going to begin, what you're going to see us working in this framework of introducing solutions for small teams on a free tier, we're introduce, and int then introducing sort of progressive, affordable tiers for businesses. The goal here being that e teams needs uh, scale and their problems change slightly. So we're going to be basically designing solutions to fit the need of every size of team and teams using Terraform. So if that's our framework, what's our first step? The, what would be a good first step? What is a, what is a problem that is always there in Terraform collaboration? <laughs> Everybody, everybody's laughing because they know this is the first hurdle, the Terraform state, a pesky Terraform state file. So Terraform state mo model, it's where it drives, derives a lot of its power, but it is the first problem that you have to solve when you're collaborating with somebody else. I have this file, I know I need to store it somewhere central and somewhere secure, um, and I need to make, make sure that uh, as I'm sharing access to this state file with everybody else, uh, that we're, we're uh, serializing and we're not, we're not clobbering each other's changes. So we said to ourselves, OK, well, that's a problem. I think that's a problem we can solve. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm pleased to announce that we are going to offer free remote state management for all Terraform users. This is the core technology that is inside of Terraform Enterprise that we are going to make available to everybody as the first step in our free collaboration tier. This is designed for collaboration, which means we're not putting limits on users, we're not putting limits on the number of workspaces, and it's designed for security and stability, which means you get per operation locking. Obviously, it's HashiCorp Vault encrypted, and each workspace has version storage for easy rollback. Our mission here is collaboration on Terraform for everyone, and this is a strong first step, uh, and we hope you think so too. I'd like to invite you all to uh, it, to join us on this journey of collaboration for everyone, uh, app.terraform.io slash sign up will get you on the wait list, and the beta begins later this year. We're really, really excited about this. All right, so I said that's the first step. So what's next? So if we have this, we have this big resolution about Terraform collaboration, what, where are we going from here? I'd like to introduce you to Mishra and Luke. Uh, Mishra and Luke, when they worked at Hootsuite, they built and then open sourced a project called Atlantis. Now, Atlantis is one of those tools that's been trying to fill that gap in the in, uh, Terraform collaboration, and it's really pr produced an interesting, a, a good workflow for Terraform collaboration for teams that's been serving its community really well. Now, Mishra's actually been a developer advocate here at HashCorp for about a year, and Luke has been maintaining Atlantis solo, full time, uh, on his own for about nine months. So we've been talking. We have this, uh, we have this new uh, mission about Terraform collaboration. Mishra and Luke and the Terraform team at HashiCorp have been talking. And we, what we discovered in chatting is that our vision for Terraform collaboration is very compatible. And so I'm happy to announce that the Atlantis team has joined HashiCorp, and we're going to work on Terraform collaboration together. So Luke's got a great blog post. If you're, if you're a member of the Atlantis community, Luke's got a great blog post that explains the details of what he's like, of, of his side of this story. Uh, the short story is we're putting our heads together on this mission of Terraform collaboration. Uh, Luke is going to, in the near term, continue to maintain Atlantis just like he has been. Mishra is going to continue to be our man in the field, uh, talking, uh, so he's going to continue his work as a de developer advocate. But we're really excited to put our heads together and really come up with a cohesive story for Terraform 
Terraform collaboration from day one to all the way up to uh, a massive organization. OK, so speaking of massive organizations, we're, I'm talking about this journey, right? So what's next for, uh, you know, so I've, we've got a great first step with remote state management for free. We've got the Atlantis folks on, on board to help us chart this course. What's next for us? Well, I mean, you kind of already know. For what's, ne what's next for uh, our customers is already here. We have been tr working on the problem of Terraform collaboration alongside of our customers since the inception of Terraform Enterprise. And this represents the cutting edge. This is where we are doing our innovation. And my final announcement shows you the leading edge of that. Now, Terraform Enterprise has, Terraform itself has always been about one workflow across multiple providers. And Terraform Enterprise has always been about one workflow for Terraform collaboration. But what we've seen in talking with various kinds of organizations is as you have, as you have adopted Terraform CLI and workflows around it, just making the switch over to the collaboration workflow provided by Terraform Enterprise was sometimes a bit of a hop. And so we wanted to just solve that problem. We wanted the, to merge these two workflows into a consistent stream. And so that's what Remote Plan and Apply do. We're really excited about this feature. This is the unification of Terraform CLI and Terraform Enterprise that we've been working on for a long time. Let me show you how it works. It all starts with a, just a regular old Terraform plan. Everybody knows a Terraform plan. Uh, but this Terraform plan is wired up via the enhanced remote backend to Terraform Enterprise. And so instead, what I get Instead of just the plan output, what I get is a URL that allows me to share this plan output with my coworkers. I get access to all of the variables securely stored on the ter in, within Terraform Enterprise. All I need is a TFE API key. And I get the streaming output from that plan right in my CLI. This is not only about adoption, this is about daily workflow for all of our Terraform Enterprise users, because this plan is a speculative plan that's using just the config that's in my local directory. So no longer do I have to make a, like a pull request to get the feedback from the plan that's being run inside of Terraform Enterprise. I can just do this over and over again from my terminal as I'm working on Terraform config. It really ch uh, changes the day-to-day -day experience of writing Terraform in a large organization, and honestly, brings it back around to that day one experience where you just have one directory full of config. So we're really excited about closing this loop. Oh, and you also get the output of Sentinel policies. This is really cool, because you can basically get, take the uh, Sentinel policies that your organization has been writing to make sure that all of your Terraform is meeting the company's needs, and you can get the feedback on those policies right in your terminal. <laughs> One guy really likes it. Um, so Terraform Apply works the same way. So Terraform Plan works whether you're using VCS to drive the actual Terraform Apply or not. But for, for teams that are using Terraform Apply, maybe like you know, running it from your laptops or often running it from a CI system, it works exactly the same way. You get the integration with Terraform Enterprise, you get the system of record of Terraform Enterprise, and you get the, the application of Sentinel policies. This creates a new way of introducing Terraform Enterprise without changing the existing workflow into uh, into an organization getting the benefits of Sentinel and getting the benefits of that module registry that's built in. So this is about Terraform Enterprise adapting to your workflow, creating a, a single unified workflow for Terraform across organizations small and large. And this, so this is available in a preview release to our enterprise customers today. But what, what, is, what I think is so exciting about this next year is you're going to start to see the, it, the, the functionality that shows up in Terraform Enterprise. We are going to be fitting that functionality downstream to all of those tiers, to all of that. So remote plan and apply is a piece of functionality that you will see eventually available to the whole community. Um, so we're just so excited about being able to have this sort of gradation of released functionality. So to review, we've been listening. We have been listening to your feedback. We have been hard at work on the core of the Terraform language in 012, and we're really excited for you to play with the alpha build and let us know what you think. And we're dedicated to solving the, t the collaboration problems in Terraform for all users with a first step of free remote state st management 
Uh, we've got the Atlantis team on board to help. And Remote Plan and Apply is uh, Terraform Enterprise becoming more flexible than ever and represents the future of what we see for Terraform collaboration. Thank you so much for your time. I'm looking forward to chatting with all of you at the conference.